I, I do hope you'll take a, a further look at some of those companies. Um, in particular, there's a couple that I think would be really good for looking at our infrastructure problem, Mark. Um, so you two should talk over beer and figure that out. Um, our next speaker uh, is uh, Jed Sunwall, who's part of the first Code for America Accelerator program and helped found Open San Diego here, which is our host. Um, now is a uh, consultant who works with governments and other entities on their communications. Thank you, Ben. That was over 20 seconds. <laughs> FYI. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been working at the intersection of government and technology for about probably about 10 years, uh, and then the most recent five years focusing on social media, uh, largely at the federal level. So I'm going to talk a little bit about hum about how humans use the internet, and then how uh, humans use the government, and how those things interact. I created these slides at the, our library, and it occurred to me, I mean, I've thought about this a lot, that the library is an interface to information. Uh, it's, the idea was the best way to store information was in books. You get a lot of books into a building, and then you go to the building and find all the books and get the information out of the books. Um, that's the whole point of libraries. And what's been remarkable, we've seen the internet has, has come about, and now we have this new interface to information that's so elegant. Um, now it fits in our pockets and you just type in what you're looking for and you'll get millions of results uh, that will likely help you. So Google in a lot of ways has made the library, the building obsolete. That's not to say the libraries are obsolete and that those buildings are obsolete. It's just that the, the function is, is a little bit different now. Um, so in similar terms, think about this building, the San Diego County building. This is where people can come to transact or interact with the government. It's an interface to the government. It's where someone goes to find the people and the forms that they need to get something done. Uh, perhaps a marriage license or a business license or things like that. Uh, the internet and, and software is also enabling us to interact with the government without actually having to go to a building. So obviously like we can pay parking tickets online, you can renew your, your car registration online. Uh, and then in a less indirect or a more indirect way, you, you know, you use things like Uber. Um, so Uber is a service that uh, lets you hail a taxi from your phone essentially. Um, and Uber only works because it's built upon the, the city as a platform, which is our infrastructure, our roads, um, the fact that we do give out business licenses and have infrastructure that, that enables something like Uber to work. Um, so the city and the fact that it's governed effectively enables services like Uber to, to work and enables these sort of services um, to be available to people. So this slide, you know, Obviously, like everyone's on the internet. I, I, I shouldn't have to make this point, but I do feel like I have to make this point whenever I'm talking to government people for some reason. Um, everyone's on the internet. And the, the, you know, very few people aren't on the internet, and it, you have to take care of them because you're the government and no one else will. But the internet is the most easiest way to find most people. Um, I like this data, this is from Pew, showing how much, how quickly people have adopted social media. So in short, over the past six years or so, over half of the population in the United States has started using social media, which is astonishing. You know, if you think back like nine years, it was weird to have a profile. Like you have a, you're doing it like if you wanted a date. Now, if you're not on Facebook, you like have to defend why you're not on Facebook. It's like a political statement. And the upside of this is it's training people that if something is important to them, it'll just come to them. You don't have to search for it anymore. You go to Facebook, you go to Twitter, everything that's relevant to you and is important right now is just there. You don't have to do anything. That's why it's so compelling, and that's why these things are being adopted so quickly. Um, and then the other thing is that people don't even think about the internet anymore, just like we don't think about electricity or plumbing. It's just, you think of Facebook, you think of Instagram, you think of email, these are buttons on your phone. So the internet as an abstraction just doesn't really matter to people anymore. Uh, they just think about what, what are the services that actually help them. And then in a similar vein, everybody uses Twitter even though most people don't use Twitter. And that Twitter is this really remarkable service, um, you know, and it enables sharing of information and, and breaking news. Most Americans, most people in the world don't use Twitter. Most people who do have a Twitter account don't actually use it. But you hear about tweets all the time. The news talks about tweets constantly. It is the way that information is shared throughout the world. So which brings me to a point, and this is sort of the theme actually for this entire event, is that Technology is absolutely critical to governing now. And if you are outsourcing technology, you are outsourcing your mission. There's a quote from my friend Matthew Burton, um, who helped start the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So my, what I implore you to do if you work within government is to learn how to do this stuff in-house. So I'm going to give a few tips about social media, because that's what I've been working on. Um, so if you have timely information, make it available on social media. Put it out there. Make it available on Twitter. Make it available on Facebook so that people can retweet it and share it with people. But learn how to do this in-house. Um, a big part of that is finding your voice. 
This is extremely challenging for any organization, you know, brand or government organization, no matter what, is learning how to sound human. Most organizations are used to like communicating via press release and communicating with the media. Learning how to communicate directly with people is really difficult. So put some time into thinking about how you sound um, and how it sounds when you interact with people. Um, the other thing is get, get comfortable with repeating yourself. Do you guys know how much money you could save if you switched to Geico? <laughs> okay. Everyone knows the answer to that question. It's because Geico is not afraid of repeating itself. If you are stewards of this region, which you are, um, and you have important information to get out, get that information out constantly, relentlessly. People are not going to get that mad at you. Um, one thing, so I work with USA.gov on their social media strategy. Um, one of the best things we did, we started answering people's questions. So if you're on Facebook and you're on Twitter, if somebody asks you a question, you know the answer, give them the answer. It was so hard to get people to, to like become comfortable with this, but it actually was extremely helpful and did a lot uh, to promote our services. And then above all, focus on your mission. Social media is fun. It's where people go to interact with their friends and, and, and crack jokes with each other. It's not your job as government. You have a different job as government, so focus on that. Otherwise, it will be weird. Um, people, people will make fun of you. Um, but but you know, there's, there's beauty in this. So, so here's the Mars rover. Second time we've talked about the Mars rover. I talked to um, Veronica McGregor. She, she works at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and writes the tweets for it. And I asked her, you know, why does NASA tweet? Like, what's the point of all this? Um, you put a lot of effort into this. And she blew my mind. She said, we want people to go outside and look up. And I was like, oh. and she's like, I had this experience, and everyone I work with had this experience, where like we were camping or something happened, we look up, we're like, oh my god, what are we doing in this universe? And they went on to pursue a career in sciences and engineering with NASA, and that's NASA's goal, is to promote that. And that's why they tweet, and that's why she does what she does, and it's a beautiful thing. And we all have that opportunity to do that as well if we work within the cities. You can use social media, you can use the internet to communicate to people in this region and show them that you care about them and want to serve them. So thank you very much.